Well, welcome to today's The Garden Life. I am so pumped. I am so inspired. Granted, I'm a little bit behind the curve, but I went to see the Barbie movie yesterday, and, and I'll be able to be thinking about it the entire time. I am gardening Barbie today. <laughs> I am donning uh, what would have been a great Barbie accessory, my farmer's sleeves to protect my arms. But we're going to talk about some things today like wrangling the window box for all of you who have said, oh, it's just too messy, it's too out of control. Well, we're going to wrangle it a bit, not because I am succumbing to follower pressure, <laughs> but because it is just time. We are also going to talk about my new furniture on the social patio, how I finally decided on what went where. We're going to do, we're going to play a Oh, let's just say we're going to call it boxwood bingo because I am moving one boxwood from one square to another square until I get it just right and I'm a winner. I'm going to be doing that. I'm planning it now. I'll be executing once it finally cools down. And there's just some other miscellaneous things. So what do you say, Stuart and Leah? Let's do it. Okay, so let me talk about my methodology of how I am going to decide what to cut and what not to cut. Now, actually, I am really thrilled with the way the entire box performed. I really did not think it could handle this intense exposure as well as it has, but it has performed just in a spectacular fashion, I think. And I love the fact that even though it has been, I've said it a lot, but it's been consistently in the hundreds for the past week, look at how all of this lantana is still blooming profusely. This in the window box, this in um, this urn that I've got with a topiary. And I am definitely going to record that for next year in my garden journal that I want to plant even more lantana next year. I may mix up my color palette, but nevertheless, it not only is a brilliant performer, but it also attracts all of those beautiful butterflies that you see everywhere in my garden that I just so love. Okay, before I get to the window box, this is a common, I think, decision point we all have right now, and that is the half-dead pot of annuals, and what do we do with it? Stuart, I'm going to move this over into the shade a little bit before I'm going to strangulate it a little bit. It's on drip irrigation. So this is scaviola. This is actually, I believe, an Australian native. At one time, it was absolutely beautiful. It was as beautiful as the lantana, but I have found it's not as tough. And it has succumbed to the heat, obviously, not only here, but I also had it planted in the various urns that are up and run up and down my walkway to the front porch, and it, it expired in those two. So, here would be my question. At this point, it's a decision point. Some of it's dead, and I could clip it out and then try to salvage the green and what remains. But you know what? I am not going to do that. If I chose to do that, what I would do is cut out all of the dead, I would clip back the green a little bit, and then as soon as it cooled down, I would start really vigorously and aggressively feeding it. And I would just feed it with anything. A miracle Grow would be fine. In my containers, I've said before, I'm not that concerned about being organic. But I'm not going to do that because I am over it. I, I, I don't, I'm tired of seeing this dead looking pot right here. I don't really care if it comes back out and is profuse again in a month and a half because by then I will have moved on. And since it isn't here as a companion plant and as a sister or brother of the other ones that I had in the urns, then there's not really any reason for me to keep it. So off to the compost pile it will go or I'll just put it out, pull it out. And since this, uh, this soil is still relatively new, I will just amend it a little bit and plant something else in it. So that's what I am going to do at this decision point. Here is my question of the day. What would you do? 
would you save it or would you toss it? So that's my question of the day. Now, as promised, let's move on to the window box. So first what I'm going to do is I am going to harvest any, and I'm, I'm still excited that I have some tomatoes and that they just haven't fried or they haven't been eaten by some critter. And can I just say how beautiful do they look in that little blue and white bowl? So before I consume them, they may have to be a still life for a while. So you can see on this side, wow. Okay, Stuart, can I get you to walk over here because This is how rambunctious it has gotten. You can't see this from the street and you really kind of, the messiness of it is largely camouflaged by this boxwood topiary in the front in the, and, and these uh, lemon lime nandinas in the foreground. So I haven't, I really didn't even notice it till the other day, but there are lots of tomatoes on here. Now I'm gonna go ahead, what? Look at all those tomatoes. Oh, I know. I thought you just were stung by a wasp or something, no, Stuart. I didn't see all the tomatoes oh. right now. Yeah, no, there is, look, there's a whole bunch of them. So, gosh, you scared me. I'm sorry. I thought, oh my gosh, a giant mosquito carried you away or something. Um, so I'm gonna cut off all of these and I'm gonna harvest them. Okay, now. Back there. I know. There, yes, there's all sorts of them. And aren't they so dear? I mean, they're just so dear. And whoever said flowers had to be the things that you, you cut to add beauty to your home or to your dining room table. Tomato down. Okay. So, so it's very, very pretty. I think they're pretty in their green state or in, in their orange state, obviously. So I'm going to cut all of those, including the green ones. Now, what will I do with the green ones? Well, I'm sure some of you, and if you know, and by the way, I have my Bergen and Ball favorite pruners right here for exacting work. Love these. Boy, and a bunch of you decided you love them too, because <laughs> they've been flying off the shelves. Um, uh, but I'm gonna get my big pruners for this because the stock on these, the stem on these is really, really big. So I am going to cut off. I wonder if I can show them. Uh, can you see that, Stuart? I think so. Okay, I'm gonna cut off these mammoth vines, vining tomatoes. Okay, some of them, look, they were even crawling up the wall. An effect that, by the way, I love. And yes, those little yellow flowers do look like little Tweety birds. What the? Okay. This yes. is why you heard me say what I said. Okay, because you didn't know it was over there. I well, I don't know that that's what I said when I discovered it, because I am a delicate flower and I don't talk like that, Stuart. What did I say? Was it bad? You said, holy crap. Oh, okay. That wasn't so bad. Um, so, anyhow, I am going to cut all of these. Now, the green ones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in a paper bag and they will continue to ripen in the paper bag as long as I put some already ripe ones along with them. That way, these will not go to waste. If you guys have some recipes for like a green tomato salsa or something like that, Leah's nodding her head vigorously. Uh, please make me some. <laughs> please. <laughs> yeah, please make me some. Um, but also just send me your recipe. Okay, so a little bit later, I will go through and I will cut off all of these. Now, did you notice, and yes, I think that is just so pretty like that. Now, you will notice that I'm not tearing it out. I'm just cutting it back. And what it will do is put out new growth that is more fresh. It's not so battered by the heat and by August. It's still in place. See, there's still, man, there's a lot of them. Um, but the plant itself will remain 
and I will begin to feed it too. And, and here's an example, Stuart, of where I'm gonna cut it back. So, and by the way, I can do this pretty much any time during the summer if it's getting overly aggressive. I was kind of just enjoying seeing how, how big it would grow, but I'm gonna clip it right here. See where there's that new shoot coming out? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna clip it right there. What kind of tomatoes are these? These were sun gold tomatoes, and I, I really wasn't sure how big they would get. I know it's a, it's, a, it's a really common classic tomato, but I wasn't sure how big it would get. I did not anticipate it getting this big, but it's been very, very fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna cut it right there. While I am cutting off these big canes, and by the way, you could do these in your, you could do the same thing in your vegetable garden, in your raised container beds. I'm gonna cut off any foliage that just looks a little bit tattered and unsightly. I kind of like the effect of this growing up the wall, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. You concur, okay. So, now I'm gonna tackle this tomato. This is how hot it's been, and, or excuse me, peppers. This is how hot it's been. It's been so hot that even these peppers are curling up. Look at that. It almost looks distorted or as if it's diseased or something. And indeed, maybe, maybe it is, but I'm not gonna find out. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off again at a similar juncture at the base where there's still some foliage that's coming out. But look, I have things to harvest on here as well. This exposes another branch here, which I'm gonna take off. Like everything, you do one thing and it tells you what to do next. So I imagine I'll have some peppers here. And just in case, I really think this has just had heat stroke, but in case it's diseased or something, I will not put this in the compost pile. I will put it in the trash. So this gives, oh heavens no, tomatoes will not go in the trash. So, so here, I'm just cutting back more pepper. Even if it has some buds on it that will turn into peppers, right now I just want to contain its size more than I want to have peppers right now. And then I'm just going to cut off any of the dead. Same here with that pepper. Now even, even this purple Joseph's coat needs a little bit of a haircut. And I think what I will do here, and yes, it will look a little bit sad at first, but I'm gonna put these in the shade and I'm gonna bring these in and I'm gonna root them, which reminds me about the, the big contention about root or root. Um, and by the way, I, I, I find these kind of distinctions just absolutely fascinating because to me, they are colloquial. They're, they are very much a geographic thing. I can hear right now, I can hear my mother say root. We grew up in Indiana and it was, the distinction was maybe the roots of a stem or the roots of a plant, but it was to root things, you rooted them. So that was kind of the distinction. Um, some of you have said, well, it just drives me crazy uh, how you say that. Well, to that I would say, then you must not travel very much <laughs> to other parts of the world or of the country because everywhere people talk differently and I love it. I find it fascinating. And I also find it interesting to Google so to, to see if, okay, is what I'm saying really, really strange? No, you'll find out that people in the Midwest, a lot of them say it that way. Um, just like they say uh, roof instead of roof. Oh yeah. Okay, I digress. How do you say root beer? I say it root beer. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna keep clipping what I wanna clip. There's stuff, stuff down in here you can't see but I'm gonna take some of these cuttings. And where I'm creating more space and more air is kind of on the back side. 
Now right here, we're gonna take a break as I refer to the backside and we're gonna go inside so you guys can see what it looks like from inside my bathroom. Now you can see from inside that some of this Irish Mint Euonymus from Southern Living, because it's at in, in the area that probably has the most brutal exposure, it's starting to brown on top a little bit. But I'm gonna clip it back above a leaf node. I'm gonna cut off the dead stuff or the browning stuff. And once I feed it, it's gonna reward me with all sorts of new growth. And because it's on the back side of the window box and you don't see this from the street, only I will know from the bathtub that it looks a little bit bare on the back side. I'm also, because I want it to grow a little bit more thickly, I'm gonna cut out some of the tips of the pineapple guava, another southern living plant. See, there's some tomatoes back there. By the way, you guys, this is a huge window box, which is why I was able to grow things in it so successfully, because it's really like a mini garden. Anything that looks like it's dead, I'm gonna cut out, and I'm just gonna groom it. And while Stuart is inside showing you this later, I will go inside to see what I have missed uh, from the inside. So I've just about got this end of the window box tidied up, tamed, and maybe a little tormented, but that's okay. You have to suffer for your beauty. So, now Stuart, let's go to the other end of the window box. Now, just before we move to the other side, I wanna point something out. Um, I really have cut this back and it will give more breathing room to some of the other things in here that were really being thugged out like this Chef's Choice Rosemary. It's a Southern Living plant, and it will now have considerably more breathing room, and it will, it will thrive. I'm not gonna cut everything off that's shading it because it's tender because it's been under the shade of some of this overgrown vegetation. So, but the other thing that I wanted to point out is it was right here on this spot that I noticed that the light is changing. The angle of the light is changing from its summer angle to its autumnal angle, and I just love it. It's becoming, it's becoming more golden. And I have to say that just as an image, I love the way that tomato vine is cascading up in front of that brick. So now, let's speed this up a little bit, Stuart. a little bit hot but you can definitely see that even though the lantana and everything else still looks full and effusive that the sides have been tamed a little bit it's really hot i am really glistening so i'm going to go back inside now with my bowl of tomatoes why don't you guys come with me 
Both, we are both glistening. Okay, this is the epitome of the garden life because this is completely, not that we ever really script any of our segments, but this is just one of those things that just happens. And it truly is the essence of living a garden life. So as we were outside and I was cutting back all of these, we began to say, okay, obviously we know what we can do with the ripe tomatoes. But we began to think, okay, what could we do with the cute little green tomatoes? And while we were out there, you just Googled it. I Googled it. Just Googled it. And we think we're going to have to make in our future some... some mini fried green tomatoes. Mini fried green tomatoes, which I think will be delicious. Now, I have used them before. I've cut them up with tomatillas and with mm -hmm. onions, and I have sauteed them and made kind of a salsa out of them. But I think this sounds a little bit more fun, kind of like tomato popcorn, because mm -hmm. they're so cute and they're so tiny. Of course, I always like to enjoy everything as a still life for a little while first. But while I was finishing filming the cutting back of the window box, Lee was out there in the heat harvesting these little darlings and we've still got some more outside that we will mm -hmm. harvest and then the rest of the branch and everything will go into the compost pile so do you remember how many stars the recipe I had five stars it had so five we're stars give it a try. okay so we are going to give it a try we're going to see if it works I think it would be absolutely delicioso mm -hmm. and um, and maybe it will encourage me to get back in the kitchen because it's just been so hot True. I can't even I can't even stand to think about it so in addition to cutting back the branches in the window box that led us then to a beautiful tableau which then led us to a recipe for fried green tomatoes which then uh, I think T. Stewart into saying how many of us have seen fried green tomatoes <laughs> and could we remember any of the actresses? So from one thing, one thing leads to another <laughs> thing leads to another thing in the garden life and all of it is life enhancing. Tell me your thoughts on that. Whew. Well, we have been working so hard out in the heat. My neighbor is also working hard out in the heat. She is doing her edging that I thought we deserved some iced tea. So at the beginning of the summer, I was really into jasmine tea and I can't remember. What was the other kind of tea that I was into, you guys? Mint? Mint, mint no. tea. Okay, now I've moved on and I am into rooibos tea, which is an herbal tea. I got this at Trader Joe's but it's delicious, is it not? Cheers. Okay, and we definitely deserve something cool and refreshing after being out here in the heat. Um, and so this gives us an opportunity to sit, to chat, and talk about my new social patio furniture. So. And your new umbrella. And my, <laughs> and my new umbrella. Okay, so all of you who are inclined to say, I told you so, I told you so. Yes, it can be windy up here on the social patio. And the other night, almost every night, I put it down, I secure it, and there's not a problem. I do that 99% of the time before I go to bed. But the one night I did not do it, we, we got a had, big storm. Oh, we had a, a very unexpected yeah. high winds. We didn't get any rain. No. All we got was high winds. And it was 50 mile an hour. And then we had wind gusts up to, I don't know, what else? All I know is that everybody was putting in a neighborhood chat all the things that had blown <laughs> off of their porches. So my gray umbrella not only blew over, it blew, blew away. away. I have no idea where it ended up because I didn't put it down. I went walking the next morning, never found it. A friend of mine said that she had one of those metal heater mm -hmm. things on her porch. Um, do they also cool? I don't know why she would have mm -hmm. had it out, but she had it out by her pool. It blew away. <laughs> And hers was in kind of a recessed area, not mm -hmm. up on a hill. I saw trash cans blowing away. Oh yeah, there, there, there was just all sorts of stuff 
blowing up in the hill. So lesson learned, I will put it down, but did it deter me from wanting to have an umbrella up here? Absolutely not. No. Because first of all, I just love the shade it provides, but also I love the way it looks. As I love the way my Christopher Knight furniture looks. I love it. So I have just been going back and forth on the furnishings up here. Now for a while I had my very old, my beloved heirloom garden furniture that I got at Jan's patio forever ago. Um, but it is now all living in the back because it matches the remainder of the dining room set mm -hmm. that came with it initially. So I decided that family wanted to all be reunited in the backyard and I wanted new furniture here. I still have the Smith & Hawken chairs as I have the Smith & Hawken bench. Some of you said, oh, well, you should sand it down and refinish it because there's still a lot of life left in it. Well, it is still very sturdy. It's still very good furniture, but I would not think to ruin the patina yeah. that's on it because it's the essence of an old English garden. So I'm not sure exactly where it will live ultimately, but I did know that I didn't have enough chairs mm -hmm. because I wanted a four top. I love the height of this table. On my patio. Yes. So much. Yes. I love it. So Leah, you may remember that when I was first, you were first started to join the team and I was deliberating on what size table I wanted for the patio. Did I want something large? Did I want mm -hmm. something small? Did I just want coffee tables? And just like uh, Goldilocks, finally finding the right chair, yeah. I finally found just the right height and scale of table that I wanted. And it also is a Christopher Knight piece so it's not too big, it's not too small. No. The black table I had here before, which I also liked, is now gone to live in the back because I don't get rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. I just repurposed them. But it's comfy, isn't I it? I love it. I feel like we could eat a meal here or have tea here or yeah. wine here, anything. Yeah, and it's spacious enough to be able to eat off of a plate. Yeah, the I other one wasn't, it was too low. Um, we could play cards, mm -hmm. we could play chess, we could play backgammon, not that I play any of those things, <laughs> but we could. Yeah. And I just think it's so nice. The other thing is, as you have already discovered, is you can work out here on your computer. Yes. So it is just, it's a nice, it's a nice workspace and it's a nice visiting space. I also love the diamond pattern mm -hmm. in the back that kind of oh, echoes yeah. the diamond pattern in my windows. Oh. And it also, I this also- I not even noticed that, yeah. I love that. Well, it's just a little design tip. We need, Stuart, we need to put up one of those little design tip things, is to find an architectural feature on your house mm -hmm. and in some way try to refer to it yeah. or echo it or the reference it. Yeah. yeah, so I like the way it looks. Hubs loves this furniture and I'll tell you why. It's because it has cushions. And the cushions, these cushions came with it. So the gray cushions came with the gray chairs. Cute. And, and the cushions match the gray umbrella I bought separate. So separately. The new one. It but was you, meant to be. It was, it was meant, meant to, to be. be. Yes, it's it's a big happy family. And I think it all kind of matches and it and it works together and it's the right scale. Now, I kind of equivocated a little bit on the color, but what mm -hmm. do you think? I love it. Do you think it matches yes, the vibe? It's the vibe for sure. The other, I, I liked the contrast of it, but with everything else going on out in the garden, I like the quietness, mm -hmm. the subtlety of this. And Nice and fresh. Yes. The other thing that I like about it is those other chairs, I loved them and they were so heavy that they would not blow away. Um, but these aren't as heavy to move around. Mm -hmm. So when you're moving from sun to shade or shade to sun, as the case may be, they are a little bit more mobile and not so heavy, but they are not so lightweight that I don't think they will blow away. Let's hope not. In Let's hope Oklahoma not. Wind. But it is Oklahoma and there's it's where the wind comes sweeping down the plains. You yes, know? it's more, true. It's more true. often than not, <laughs> it does. So, but I absolutely love it. And what else do we love about it, Leah? 
We just checked. Oh yeah, they're on sale, super sale right now. Yes, they're on super sale right now. That and why couldn't they have you. gone super sale before I bought it? Yeah. Stuff goes on super sale after I buy it and then I'm left. They know. Yeah, this they is know. not a sponsored post. I bought these <laughs> with my own hard earned money and, and then they go on sale. I just, her no. loss is your gain. Yes. So <laughs> well put. My loss is your gain. Um, I didn't check the table to see if looked, it yeah. was on sale, but the chairs come in sets of two. Um, and again, this isn't sponsored. I'm just sharing this with you guys because when I didn't share it in a previous post, so many people ask me. So it's one of the reasons I always want to give you guys the source information. And because I think all of you guys are kind of like me and we're thrifty and we don't want to take a ton of time to hunt for things. Mm -hmm. And if I find a solution to a problem that I think is good looking, cost effective, easy and does the trick, then we're here to share. Yes. I'll toast to that. Cheers. Well, if you wanna really make someone feel special, here is a grace note that I think is worth executing. So I'm gonna have a friend over for a glass of wine here shortly, and I thought she would just so appreciate the extra effort I put into the presentation. So I just took some red grapes, I froze them. You can also do green seedless grapes, but I think the red is especially beautiful. I put ice in the bottom of my crystal ice bucket, put my favorite house wine, the bottle into the ice bucket, and then I just have cascade over the side these elegant elegant grapes and then you can adorn each glass with a frozen grape and I promise you that this is sure to make whoever your guest is feel very special well slowly but surely maybe not even slowly actually rather rapidly <laughs> I am working down my list trying to get just the tail ends done those kind of outlying things that have bothered me that don't require a massive overhaul crew to come in and do some heavy work. But they have been kind of vexing little frustrations that I've had that have been important to me. And one of them is that I just have always felt that I did not have enough privacy from my front door because you can very, very easily come up to my front porch, look in my front window, and see all the way back to the kitchen. So if I am there in my PJs or in my curlers or in my robe, I might not necessarily want somebody to be able to see me from my front porch if they come to the front door. That is a downside of having an open living house like this. Um, but I've come up with a solution. So I did a little bit of research. I, we talked, I share with you guys and you gave me some brilliant ideas. I shared with you that I thought about frosting this. I thought about etching it. I thought about completely replacing it with some opaque glass. This is beveled. I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do. This is one of those cases where I should have listened to hubs because he said, you know, I think they can make some kind of laminate cover or something that can go over this window that will give you the opacity you want, but still allow the light to come flooding in. So in that process, I started out first with a window company and they said that they really couldn't help me because this was a vintage door. It would be cost prohibitive, very difficult, and I'd have to live without my door for a while. So they suggested that I call someone and I believe it was called the Window Genie and they, they do come up with these, I don't wanna call it a sticker, but a covering that you can put over the glass itself, which will do two things. It will give me the privacy 
and the opacity that I am craving while simultaneously also covering up some of the scratches and some of the wearing on this very old door. What I also like about it is I am not changing anything out. So I won't have to have HP approval. I won't have to go through any of that process. I can do this on my own without a hitch, or not necessarily on my own, um, but I don't have to have any kind of clearance to do it. So a guy came out, he visited with me. We looked at all sorts of different samples of what effect I might want to get that would go with this vintage of house that wouldn't look too modern, that wouldn't look too contrived, but that would really match my house. And it was hard because it's so easy to be seduced with all of the different effects that they can come up with. You know, they can come up with uh, ones that are kind of called rain, that are, are vertical striations. There can be horizontal striations. They can, you know, they can do initials. They can do um, scenes. They can do all sorts of things. And it was really easy to just look at those and be overwhelmed. And then I thought, as I have often said, just like in the garden, the garden will tell me what to do next your house will tell you what to do next. And I thought, okay, another design tip that works on the outside works on the inside too. What is something that already exists here that I can reference that will make it look as if this has been here forever? And I remembered that these windows inside this closet had this wonderful wavy glass. Stuart, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. And it is very much a feature and a, a something that was used in the design of these 1930s houses. And so I asked if he had anything like that. And indeed he did. So I am going to have, it's actually called glass block, wavy glass block. It comes in two different styles. One that has a grid as if it is glass block itself, but I did not want that. I'm going to have just the glass block without any kind of perimeter. So the whole thing will look as, look as if it is piece a piece of glass block. So they came out, they took some measurements, it will be laser cut and they will do the install. Now it really was more expensive than I anticipated. It was, I wanna say over $300. However, significantly less than it would be had I replaced the glass, replaced the door, really did any alternative. This was significantly less. The other thing, as my husband so astutely pointed out to me, there's a lot of labor involved in this. I mean, just to get somebody to come to your home to make two different trips before they even apply what it is and install what it is you are buying, that in and of itself is almost worth what I spent. So that helped me put it in perspective, not feel as if I was making an expensive mistake and I cannot wait to see it executed. It will get here, um, it's, as I said, it was custom laser cut, and I think they're gonna install it on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, which coincidentally is also when they're gonna come out and install my window in the great room. So I definitely will be looking at the world through different lenses. Well, it may be too hot to plant, but it's not too hot to plan. And that's what I'm doing right now as it relates to most of my boxwood balls. I'm thinking of it as boxwood ball bingo. I'm just moving things around until I become a winner and I get the effect that I want. So I always have kind of a starting point. And my starting point here is, back, is actually the entirety of the garden because I look at it and I'm gonna start doing kind of a schematic of where the evergreens are in the upper terrace, because it can be kind of difficult to see that right now because there's so many things in bloom. But why am I wanting to do that? Because I wanna make sure that this area has winter evergreen interest in addition 
to just the foliar interest than the floral interest that I have right now. In other words, I don't want them to look barren in winter. There is such a thing as a winter garden. And I wanna make sure that this is as attractive and almost as compelling in winter as it is in the summer. So I'm making note of where I have different evergreens. I mean, you can see the obvious ones. I've got some really large boxwood balls, but then I also have several smaller boxwood balls and even smaller yet kind of boxwood balls to be like this one over here. So one thing I'm going to be, what I'm going to be doing this fall is I'm going to be taking out some of these candy butterfly because I planted them too densely, not being really that familiar with their growth habit and I'll transplant them someplace else. And then I will be adding more evergreens, more primarily boxwood balls. So where am I gonna get the boxwood balls? Well, this is where it comes in. It's kind of like a set of dominoes. And this is how my brain works, as scary as that may be, Stuart. So I look at this one and I think, okay, this one is beautiful and it's about to outgrow its pot. So this one really needs to be planted in the ground. So when it cools off, when I pull out some of these annuals that are starting to look a little straggly, then I will decide the perfect placement for this boxwood ball, as I will for all of this foxglove that is growing at the base. Now it's too hot to do this now, but I'm already thinking about the future. But I like the position of this evergreen here in a pot. So I want the pot to remain. Okay, so what then am I going to put in this pot to replace this one that is a little bit too overgrown? Well, I will probably, I've got two different options but probably the one I'm gonna go with is this one. Because this one is a little bit too overgrown for its container. And I will move this one to a larger, to the larger container over there. So it's like hopscotch. I'm referencing every kid's game there is, but this one will then move over there. Okay, then I have an empty pot. So what is going to go in here then you say? Well, then I will probably put this topiary either in that pot, Which one? this oh, that one right one. Sorry, here. I was, I was looking at the one behind yeah, us. because <laughs> it's getting a little bit too large for this pot. And We're this not. is one, by the way, that I started from scratch. I started, I started it as a baby. So I can either move it to that pot or where I am more likely <laughs> to move it. Are you keeping up? I, I, I so. need a little graph. Yeah. <laughs> I need a little graph. Where I'm more likely to put it is in this pot because this pot doesn't have an evergreen in it at all and in the winter it will just look empty. So probably because this is a large container, it is heavy, it is very, very durable, very heavy. Yeah. And it, I think, will very much protect the root zone of that topiary. So in all likelihood, I will move that topiary into here and the sedum autumn joy I'm going to use on autumn's edge because I don't have any of it in there and I want to put more of it in there. So that one I am going to move here. And that's just kind of how my brain works. Um, some of the topiary that's on the front porch may go live on the back steps. I'm not 100% sure. I might even get some more boxwood. Um, I am beyond thrilled with the performance of the better boxwood. I, it, it, I mean, it is 104 and it has not skipped a beat everywhere, in every single location. It is handling the elements absolutely beautifully. It makes, it is making a beautiful, shiny evergreen ground cover now, and later it will be uh, a shrub 
more of a shrubbish round cover and I love the way it lo looks and I also love the way the evergreen forms the balls, the cones, the topiary look in winter, especially when they have a dusting of snow. There's no way that's the basil. That is the basil. No yes, it is, Stuart. <laughs> that that basil started out like this one right here. Yep. <laughs> and it's just overgrown. I need to cut it back. Um, while we're standing here, I'm going to see if any of this, I'm letting this one go to seed because this will be really prized seed once it does go to seed. And it's not quite, quite dry enough yet. It's not quite dry, but inside there, it's impossible for you to see right now, but inside there, there will be little black seeds. There's one, okay, there's one. And I'm letting all of this go to seed because now I know how prized a plant this is. And I think you mentioned it, Stuart, because it looks so much like boxwood, i.e. boxwood basil. So I will let all of this dry and go to seed and I will save lots of the seed because I will be planting it everywhere on both terraces. My design objective for next year is to have this side maybe resemble this side a little bit more. Um, so that's just, I'm, I'm just kind of working on that. But that is, that's kind of how my mind works is you know, I just find a starting point, a need. Then I find something that might be able to fit that need, starting out first with something I already have. And then I've created a void. What can I use to fill that void? Preferably something I already have. And so it's just, okay, the only game I haven't referenced, I guess, is pinball, Stuart. <laughs> so whether you play bingo, you play hopscotch, you play dominoes, or you play pinball, all of those analogies are great when you are, when it's too hot to plant and you are trying to plan your garden. Have a great Sunday, you guys, and that's The Garden Life.